This is resuming the um, the uh, Board of Equalization meeting that uh, was held on May 7th and continued over to May 21st. Um, we'll note that all commissioners are present with the exception of Mr. Holt, Commissioner Holtman, who's absent. And uh, the first item of business then is uh, to ask the assessor, um, have you completed your work? Uh, Mr. President, commissioners, I have completed the work. Okay. At this time, if there's anyone in the audience that uh, uh, has questions or concerns about uh, their property valuation, you may come to the podium, state your name, and uh, express those uh, concerns to the commission at this time. Hello, uh, my name is Mark Hendrickson, and uh, I'm representing Northern Improvement. And uh, we have a piece of property that is an undeveloped piece of property. We use it for parking equipment, um, source of material on there. <clears throat> anyway, the, we just got annexed into the city here in the last year, and. Uh, uh, prior to getting annexed into the city, the property was valued at $3,800. Uh, the value that I got on uh, this new appraisal that we have has a value of $224,900. And this property has no city services on it. There's no garbage, there's no water, there's no sewer. Um, so I guess, you know, I just kind of question the value of how it can go up that, that fast. How many acres did you say? Yeah, it is 10 acres. 10 acres. Um, Mr. Hersfield, are you familiar with this piece of property? I am. I spoke with the gentleman earlier today about this property. Uh, I valued it in line with some of the other northern uh, industries properties at around $45,000 an acre. Uh, the sales in that uh, area over the last 12 to 18 months have ranged between 30000 an acre to 97000 an acre. So that 45000 is within, well within that range of values and is consistent with the other values in that area. Uh, in addition, uh, since it is an undeveloped parcel, I did uh, take it at 50% value, uh, which is typical to other undeveloped lots. So, uh, in a sense, you valued it at just over $22,000 an acre? That is correct. Okay. Um, have, have you consulted with any outside uh, I guess experts to value the property. I mean, would you have an alternate valuation for us to consider? You know, I uh, we can uh, I guess go back to uh, 2008 was when we purchased the property. We paid five thousand dollars an acre for it. And you know, I know you're talking about some of the other properties around there, but these are developed properties. They got water. They got sewer. They got buildings going on it. You know. This is, you know, I think it's a little bit different, and I realize value has gone up some, but it's kind of hard to swallow when you go up uh, $200,000 in value in a year. Um, Mr. Hurstfield, um, the point about this being undeveloped and, and other properties being developed, when you looked at the sales of the sales that uh, occurred in that area, were they strictly developed land sales or were there some undeveloped land sales? Uh, Mr. President, Commissioner, no, there was a mixture of each. Uh, most of the sales up there are uh, undisclosed sales. I cannot give those sale prices out or 
well, the price I can, but not uh, which lots or the owners. However, uh, across the street, of course, they have a little bit better location with the highway frontage, but uh, Baker Hughes and Halliburton both uh, disclosed their sales prices, and uh, they were in excess of 65000 an acre for raw land and, and 40 acres each. And uh, I don't, uh, didn't get a letter from the uh, tax director at the uh, county office, but I spoke with her too, and she had mentioned that her values were up, and she and I were pretty close to what our values were, and uh, the value would have went up on your property regardless, even if it would have stayed in the county. Of course, I don't have that number in front of me to tell you what it would have been. Yeah, and, and we do realize the property values have gone up some, but this one's a little bit too shocking for us. Mr. Frenzel? Yeah. Uh, just exactly where in relation to your, your uh, main shop is this property yeah. to the east? This property, the junction there that Two's Construction is at, yes. it's about a quarter mile to the east. East of Two's? Right. You're, you're aware, you talked about not having water and sort of, you know, the land going all the way to the Dunn County line and actually into Dunn County. Mm -hmm. It's currently selling for about three dollars and fifty cents a square foot Monthly. for ten acre properties. You know, I you know I'm not an expert, but I do know prices yeah, have well, gone up. But, but and they've, you know, they've done tremendous things in the last two years. I mean, it's yeah, I, they blow your socks off no matter what. You know. Yeah, I realize that, but you know, like say, um, you know, if he's, uh, he's got you about fifty cents a square foot, <laughs> and you're four miles closer, so. I don't have a problem with it. The, uh, the prior valuation when you said uh, $3,800, was that per acre or for the whole 10 acres? That was for the whole 10 acres. Do you think maybe that might have been a little low? Yeah, we didn't complain about that. No. <laughs> I, I, I think oh, that was pretty but reasonable. But I mean, <laughs> it's, it's likely that that was not a realistic value even at the last time it was valued. It, you know, we you, like you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have sold it for thirty eight hundred dollars. No, because we we Cause paid more than that for it. You paid you know. five thousand dollars an acre, right. so you, it should have been at a minimum valued at fifty thousand yeah. dollars when it was valued at thirty eight hundred. Yeah. yeah, that's true. And that's I true. you know, if you guys want, I wrote up a little letter too to well, Joe yeah, here. To can to and it. but I mean, what? He'll give you the copy of the old tax one. Right. Yeah. Where we're at, and, and I know that's. That's quite an adjustment, yeah. but I, I would suggest that it was set on realistically low. Even, you know, at the, at the time uh, you bought it, it should have been adjusted upwards. Yeah. And uh, as Commissioner Frenzel said, we've seen extraordinary prices paid for both developed land and undeveloped land, either within the city limits or outside the city limits. Yeah. What? Besides saying it seems to be quite a jump, can you offer us any proof that his number is wrong? Um, you know, I know on the property he's looking at, there are some oil companies that that bought those properties and are putting up facilities on them. And I think that's part of the reason that they got the price form is the, you know, there's a lot of money in the oil field and and uh, these people wanted that property for whatever their particular reason was from, but I, you know, I think we would be hard to press to sell our property for something close to that. If, you know, we, if, if we brought in an independent appraiser, do you think that independent appraiser would value this property lower than Mr. Uh, Hirschfeld has? I would think so. You think so? Yeah. Um, because if, it, if it's really worth that, <laughs> you should be selling it. <laughs> well, of course, property values are going to go up and down as development goes. Well, yeah, I mean, I but, but right now, mm -hmm. that's what we have to go on is the land sales around you. Yeah. Uh, and right. <coughs> you, I think you have to bring to us um, something you know, kind of tangible, like I said, an outside appraiser or some uh, land sales that uh, perhaps we've missed or something that would, or um, there's something you know, wrong with the property. 
um, you know, if it's got an environmental issue or something like that. Uh, we, yeah, we don't have any environmental issues, but it's, you know, like I say, we just wanted to bring it up to you. Uh, you know, we feel it's high. You know, not that, like I say, not that we want to go back down to the 3,800, but hopefully there would be some middle ground in there. That's all we're asking is, well, it, you know, like I say, the, the property, you know, just doesn't have that type of value. We just store equipment on it and uh, some materials we store on there. Well, and yeah, I understand, that, but I mean, you can have very valuable property and not have it for sale and, I mean, not using it in, say, a, a valuable way. I mean, we, we can't look at how you're, you're mm -hmm. using it. We have to look at what the land sales are around you. Yeah, and, and like I say, and you never know. Maybe the next piece of property sitting around there sells is going to sell for a more realistic number. It might. You know, so, you know, I, I mean, it's like, say, at one point in time, a piece of property might be valued at something, but six months later, it may not again. So, trying a couple of sales, you know, I don't know if it's right to be boosting mine up that high. You know, That's all we're asking. Mr. Frenzel, um, you know, since you're in the real estate business, what you know, when you look at the past 12 months or so, I mean, what has happened with the value of land in the community, or maybe the past 24 months? In the last two years, land has increased uh, hundreds, actually hundreds of times. It, it's, it's phenomenal. If he was putting the land up for sale, if he actually wanted to sell it today, you'd get more than the $22,000 that he that he's assessed it at. No question about it. This was land out there in that neighborhood is uh, 10 acres is anywhere from a buck and a half to four dollars depending on how close it is to the highway mm -hmm. so uh, 50 cents a square foot is not that unusual and you granted you might not think it's might have much value and what you're doing with it might not have a great deal of value but that doesn't mean the land itself yep. is worth more money. It, and you know, I'm not an expert at it, but I we just thought it was worth questioning. So if you guys can see fit to adjust that, we would appreciate it. If you guys can't, you know, I guess we'll move on from there. It's hard to adjust the appraisal on, on one when you use the for other comparables that have paid the same price or are getting taxed on the same level. Uh, like if you say, even if they become reasonable, and whose definition of reasonable, uh, it can be reevaluated, reappraised, which would take into consideration the future lots that, if they were selling for less, then eventually this would all catch up. But right now, when you got to appraise it and value it with comparables, I, I don't see how you could change what it is. Uh, Mr. President, oh. Commissioners, if I may. Uh, valuation is done every year based off of uh, February 1st valuation date. If in the next few months uh, sales do fall back more in line of your thinking, uh, then I would review those sales and if it market indicates that there would be a downward adjustment next year. I mean, I, I don't raise values continuously every year. It follows what the market's doing. It's a, it's a hot land market up there right <laughs> now. Uh, yeah, like I say, I, we, do, it's, we do realize that the yeah. market is, is stronger than it used to be, but we just I thought it would bring to your attention, like say, it's, you it's a big increase. If you want to do something with it, we'd yeah. sure be happy to hear that. Mm. All right, thank Kay. you. Thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to address the commission? I, I'd like to just ask, how, how, how do you evaluate land like me. I, I live out at Weber's subdivision, lot four, block two. And, and, and here in the last oil boom, you know, we put water and sewer in our place. Excuse me, just can you identify oh, yourself? Ray Riddle. Okay, thank Eight, you. 871, 24,000 East. Okay. In, in, in the last boom, you know, Cattles Lee and Jackson, they t I got an acre out there. And they run the sewer, instead of running it down the street, they run it into, into four lots. And now I had to run my sewer all along the back of my lot. And now, my, and just you say my lot's worth about thirty-five thousand. Huh? 
out there in the Weber subdivision. By, by acre out there. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, which subdivision? Weber subdivision. Weber, I'm. That's out east of Dickinson here. By Parkway Ford. Okay. Uh, you know, they, well, they, they built some big, big houses out there. And I, I'm sure my house probably went up, but I, I don't think it should have went up $26,000 in one year. In fact, you had it at 29000 and you brought me a letter and said that it's only worth twenty six. You know, you dropped it down to twenty six thousand evaluation in one year. Uh, again, the uh, valuation is based off of market interaction between the buyers and the sellers. Uh, but what, what I'm saying is, I got that acre, but now if I want to sell it, what would I have to do? And Gene, Gene Jackson knows what, what I'm talking about out there. I know where you are, Ray, but what are you asking? You know, you, when you when you remember when you put those, that that sewer line right in between four lots here, yeah, here about thirty years ago. I remember sewer went in. I don't remember exactly how. It went right is. between four lots because somebody out on the other side of the street didn't want sewer down that street. And now now if I'd want to sell it, could I sell it or sure. or would I, what would I have to do? Put it give it give somebody an easement. He's going to have he's going to have the the, the value of the, of the lot. Uh, you know what I'm trying to say is is it, is, is, is it worth that kind of money with the sewer running in the back of the lot? I can draw you a picture if you want. You're asking if you include the value of that line running through the lot. No, no, your asking I, price, right? this is for my my house is on one end of the lot, and the sewer is 260 feet away is the manhole. And then I had to run my sewer all the way up the back of the lot. And then I got about 150 feet, you know, between where I don't have nothing on the garage. So, the, so the um, sewer has increased the value of your land. Is that what you saying? Not, not, not necessarily. On my house, it is, but it, but, I, but I got like I got an acre, you know. So I'd want to split it up, okay. And I'd want to sell the back half of that lot, but I got a sewer running sewer line running through it from my house. What, what, what would I have to do there? Well, I, I think what you're really asking is if the city assessor was aware that there's a sewer line in there right. and that perhaps the uh, you know, the well, full surface is not usable. Is that what? Yeah, you see, not for mine, but it'll, you know, let's say 10 years from now my sewer line went to hell or something and I sold that lot. And I'd ha we'd have to dig it up or something. You can't build over top of a sewer line, can you? No. No. No, but I'm... I, I, well, you know, it, what I'm saying is somebody really screwed, goofed up here 30 years ago. Well, th and that may be, but of course we can't change that. But no. it, well, I think what he's really concerned about is when, you know, you valued that land, are you aware that maybe a portion of it is not usable? Right. Or has, would be, have restricted uses. And, restricted and, use. and I mean, if he wants to come out, I can show him exactly yeah, what. The, the city assessor, you know, unless you specifically brought something to his attention is not going to have um, detailed knowledge of every piece of property now what we could do is we could take a few minutes you could go back to your office and look at the property again would you want to do that uh, that may be necessary I if I understand the question he's more concerned with whether it's a sellable lot and I no, don't not, not not I don't I don't plan to sell it right now but no. let's say you know five years or something would it be sellable in five right. years yeah I, I can show him what I mean if you, if you, if you have the time I can show you that would be at the pleasure of uh, yourself well we you have permission. until 4 30 uh, is there anybody else in the audience that wants to address the Commission because we could take a little break here you could and we'll send Commissioner Jackson with you since he's an expert on sewer lines and uh, can look at that he's just looking for the value of the easement you want to do that I mean, certainly could. why don't why don't we take 10 minute break okay you go you go with mr. Hirschfield back to his office okay. and you put you can pull up his property can't you yes I can okay why don't we do that and Mr. Jackson, if you don't mind, why don't no, you don't take along and and we'll wait here. Don't mind at all. We'll come back to order. Um, I guess we kind of settled it. You, know. you, you work things out, right? We're okay. Well, I guess we are. All right. Okay. Thanks. Well, a lot. Thank you. 
Is there anybody else that would like to address the commission or the uh, Board of Equalization? That uh, will close then the public hearing part of this. Um, uh, commissioners, are there any property valuations you wish to change? Not. Uh, we'll move on then to uh, the assessor's report. Uh, Mr. President, commissioners, uh, as of May 14th, 2012, I had uh, completed the valuation <coughs> and the uh, true and full valuation for the city of Dickinson. Uh, the 2011 commercial value was $247,179,050. The residential uh, value last year, 2011, was $776,264,400 for a total of $1,023,443,450. In 2012, commercial had increased to $338,203,050, while the residential value increased in 2012 to $850,232,600, for a total of $1,188,435,650. In 2011, new construction, in 2011, commercial new construction uh, had a value of $10,796,700, while the residential new construction had a value of $21,351,700 for a total of $32,148,400. In 2012, that increased, commercial increased to $45,186,338. Uh, New construction for residential was a little bit higher, $27,352,000 for a total of $72,538,338. Uh, total new construction of 2012 was just over two times what our increase was in 2011. Our 2012 uh, commercial sales ratio was 79%, 79.3. That means uh, on average or the median sale was at 79% or our assessed value was 79% of what the sale price was. While residential, the assessed value was at 88% of sale price. Uh, the uh, state board of, or the state tax board uh, changed our tolerances from 95 to 100% down to 90 to 100%, gave us a little bit more leeway. When I made the uh, adjusted or adjustments to the evaluations, commercial, uh, Median ratio is now at 94.4%, and the residential adjusted ratio is at 93.6. Both of these ratios are now within tolerance with the state. And my recommendation to you, gentlemen, is to uh, leave the valleys where I have them, as we are well within the tolerances set by the state of North Dakota. Thank you, uh, Mr. Hirschfeld. Uh, you've heard his report. Do you have any comments or questions for him? Now, would there be a motion to accept and approve the assessor's report? So moved. Is there a second? We have the motion and the second. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Mr. Frenzel? Aye. Mr. Jackson? Aye. Chair votes aye. So the motion carries. Um, Mr. Colling, the remaining item of business that I believe we have are the uh, take action on the exemption categories. There are four of them. Uh, the Renaissance Zone exemptions would be the first one. I don't believe there are any Renaissance Zone exceptions this year. Uh, no, Mr. President, there are not. Okay. There are two-year residential exemptions, and uh, those are included in your packet, a list of those. Um, would there be a motion to... Uh, uh, to uh, approve those exemptions. So moved. Is there a second? Second. We have the motion and the second. Um, just in the way of discussion now, this is, this does not exempt the land, but it does exempt $75,000 of the housing value for two years. Do I have that right? Uh, our exemption gives the uh, first $100,000 of the value. First 100 Yes. For two years. Correct. Okay, it's 100000 okay. Any other questions then or discussion? 
Hearing none, we'll vote on the motion. Mr. Frenzel? Aye. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Mr. Jackson? Aye. Chair votes aye. The motion uh, carries. Are, are there any builder exemptions this year? Uh, Mr. President, Commissioners, there are not. Uh, the builder's exemption we went ahead and done away with last summer. Okay. And then uh, real estate exemptions, are there any real estate exemptions? Yes, sir, there are. That would be the attachment B. That's attachment packet. B. Okay. So you have that in your packet. Are there any comments or questions uh, concerning uh, any properties on that list? Not. Would there be a motion then to approve the, uh, the real estate exemptions listed in attachment B? I'll move. Is there a second? Second. We have the motion, the second, any discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote. Mr. Jackson? Aye. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Mr. Frenzel? Aye. Chair votes aye. <coughs> the motion carries. Are there any tax abatements to consider? Mr. President, Commissioners, at this time there are no tax abatements to consider. Okay. Is there any other business to be done? Uh, I have no further business. Mr. Colling? Okay. There's no further business. Chair to entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll move. Is there a second? Second. We have the motion and a second. All in favor of adjourning, say aye. Aye. Opposed, say nay. The motion.